Hello and welcome to this, the first episode of series two of our App Builder creation videos. I hope you enjoyed the previous series. If you've not checked it out, be sure to head to our YouTube channel and find the Creating an App Builder playlist. We left off last year with a fairly functional user interface that was looking great. We could create projects, edit widgets and update the app theme and its metadata. But you couldn't yet add new widgets or remove them from the user interface. So let's fix that. And so we jump right back into Visual Studio Code. The only changes since the last video have been updating dependencies, making sure that everything is using the latest versions. There was some small changes to this unreleased.go file where we're still working with theming components that haven't been finalized in the fine project, but that's pretty close to completion. So hopefully we should be able to talk about that in the next or an upcoming video. As always, you can follow along with the changes. Our GitHub repository is under the Fine Labs organization called Fission Tutorials, and you can always find the latest version of the code available there. But let's get stuck right in. Before we do start on any more code, let's just remind ourselves of where the application got to and run it like we were doing in previous videos. So at the project level, we will just go run and then the current directory to execute the code that we have. We have our new project wizard, which we can tap there. But I'm going to open a recent project, which I've called x2. It shows the files that we have available. And we can open the user interface file here called main.gui. Inside the preview, we can select widgets. We can interact with them, making changes and we can apply the theme. And we're able to choose the container that the widgets are in as well and adjust the layout. For example, I can make it a horizontal box back to vertical as it was before. Or with a stack container, items are appearing one underneath the other. There's also the app metadata. But that's, I think, everything that we covered in the first series. So what I really want to do next is to expand on this widget editing. So instead of just editing what's on screen, we can add new items. I think that belongs down here in this corner, which looks a bit unused. We should add a list of the types of widgets that we could add and an insert button to put them into the current container. So let's see how we can get started with that. So let's jump back into our make GUI function where a lot of code has been added already. You can see from this main container section here that we are passing the tabs into our editor setup and the widget tab is created from widget info, which we're creating here. It's currently just a form with the type and then some items populated from the GUI helper library that we have been using. So above that, the first thing that we're going to want to do is display a list of the types of widgets we can add. And to get that, we're going to need to interact with that same library to understand what widgets are available. So we can get the uh, widget names from that library. The widget class list is going to return us a slice of strings. And using that, we're going to want to populate a list that displays all of them. So the uh, name list perhaps is going to be a new list and we're going to pass into that our function uh, for length which returns an int I think let's actually just copy it out of the constructor here so that I don't make more typos so we'll paste that in there and we need to implement these functions don't need to give them a name. We're just going to pass them in as anonymous code. So we want the length callback, the uh, callback that creates the template object, and the third callback, the update, which is going to apply that data to um, the template, given the index in the list. So the length is pretty straightforward. We just return the uh, length of widget names nice and easy. And our template is just going to be 
a label. So we can return new label and give it some kind of meaningful content like that. And then our update function, much like many that we've done before, we're going to get the name from the list, the string, and apply that to our lists, um, the reused object. So we have the ID and the object that's being passed in. So the uh, name is widget names um, at index ID. And then for the object, we want to say we know that it is a label and we're going to set the text to be name. That is our list. Um, sorry, just missed a little bit of namespacing there. So we have the list of widgets that can be, that can be added. Uh, at the bottom of that, um, I'm going to want to put a button, an insert button, which would be widget.new button, uh, labeled insert, and that is going to take a function, which is the action of what to do when we're inserting the item in. So far, so good. Now, we need to think about what's going to happen when we do want to insert that item into the list. Well, we're going to need to figure out um, what was selected. That could be done, I suppose, by interrogating the widget state, but let's just keep track of it here. And then we could say if uh, nothing was selected, then we can simply return. There's nothing to do here. And then our list can update that. So when something is selected on the list, we can say that is that name. Oh, sorry, we need to set the function. Um, and that's close but not quite, um, because that is the ID. List item ID. And so instead of just a string, we're going to do the same and pull out the widget name from the list at that ID index. So now the insert button is able to understand which class of object was being inserted or the user wanted us to insert. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that the uh, currently selected widget on screen is a container because we can't add a widget into another widget. It needs to be a container. So we could do that with a type check. The currently selected widget is stored currently in the um, global uh, variable current, I think. Um, current. Let me just see. We had the GUI selector, which is updating uh, chosen. The widget selector type is in here. It's called so we're going to want to reference that. Let's just do the trick of declaring it earlier. Tapper is a widget selector, and that then gets set here instead of instantiated. So we can then do tapper.chosen. And we're going to ask if it is a fine container type and if that is not okay we're going to want to error there we can say dialog dot show error um, let's let's make a quick new error as there wasn't really an error to pass out selected widget must be a container and that will be shown to the user think uh, now we 
used a dialogue elsewhere, didn't we? And the window we just cheated with before. We'll need to refactor at some point to pass the window that we're using in so that we don't have to keep doing that lookup. But that's okay for now. Um, oh, I pass that into the errors constructor instead of into the dialogue. Um, show error function call. So that's not okay. Uh, we will then return. There is nothing more that we can do and we're not actually going to need to make use of that container type. But now we can continue with the insertion. To put a widget into the container, we need a new instance of that widget. So to do that, we're going to go back to the GUI library and ask to create a new widget of that type. We can just pass in the type that we stored earlier, and that has created the item for us. And we've checked that this is a container. So what we can then do is add the object that we just created. Excellent. That's pretty straightforward. One other thing that we do need to do is to make sure that the item that's going to be added is in the theme of the thing that we're previewing. This kind of relates to the unreleased uh, we're just inserting this object into a container that has a theme override so that it can look differently to the rest of the application. So what we're going to want to do also is to refresh that containing element so that it can apply it to um, all of the new items that we've just put in. Um, now themer um, was just declared just a little bit later there and I think we can take that out of where it was and just drop it up here to avoid lots of um, redeclarations. Okay, so that's the code to insert it. We have our name list and our insert button. We need to do something with them, I suppose. Uh, so let's go to see where widget info was inserted into the user interface. Here. So instead of widget info, we need widget panel which is going to combine the two. So widget panel is a new um, split, I think is probably the right thing to do, a new vertical split, which has the top item and the bottom specified, and the user can adjust how much space is available. So widget info, and then the add container. let's call it add remove because there's going to be more in there soon. That's going to need to be created as well. We're going to have down at the bottom we're going to have um, the list and then the insert button at the bottom of it so that is a great usage for the new border. At the top we have nothing, at the bottom we have the insert button. Uh, left and right are empty and we want the the widget list, the name list, in the center section. Um, top is empty, no, top, sorry about that. Now that's all of our um, build setup, uh, all the build issues gone away, so it's probably a good time to, to test it again, I think. So that has been successful. Our user interface has displayed. I can open the same project as before, open the user interface, and inside this container, we can try and add a new hyperlink, for example. And that's going to display it under here, and we can update the text on there. Excellent! That is just grand. And if we try to add another one with the hyperlink or the label selected, we get that error that displayed the selected widget must be a container. So that's kind of tested the code path, and we're able to see that this is working completely uh, as a container like when we started. But of course this widget can't be removed, so we'll look at that shortly. But I feel like this selection could be tidied up here. There's a lot of, um, well, unnecessary information. A container doesn't have to know, tell us it's in fine package and the 
All of the other widgets are just in the widget package, so let's see if we can just strip that. And perhaps we could make it a little smaller as well. So the smaller part is to do with our vertical split. So here we can just say that the widget panel uh, offset should be further. So 0 0.5 is halfway. Let's put that at 0 0.7. And when it comes to the text that's displayed, that is going to be in our update function here. So really, we just want the part that comes after the full stop, I suppose. Um, so we could, I mean, we could assume there's always a full stop in there. Actually, probably safe to because every one of those had a package. Um, so instead, we could call that the uh, class. And then the name is from strings.split. We have the class, which is the input, and the separator is just a full stop. And the name is the second, or index one, element. Let's just have a quick look, because I think that's probably all we needed to do to update, update that display. And in the widget panel, we click a container. Well, actually, we didn't need to. This was already displaying quite correctly. And that's our divider in a more pleasing place, I think. So let's look at the possibility of deleting a widget, because currently all we can do is add. So to do that, we're going to want just another button. We've got insert created here. So let's make a new one called, I guess, remove. Instead of just a button with text, and it takes up quite a lot of space, and this shouldn't feel like a primary action. Um, so let's have uh, no label, but instead a delete icon um, that will pass the code that needs to run there, but also as a danger sign. Let's set the importance of that button to danger. And that, depending on theme, but with the current theme, should highlight it red so we know not to tap it by mistake. Now, what do we want to do to be able to remove an item? Well, this time we don't need to check that it is a container. I suppose we, we need to make sure that something has been chosen, so we should probably just check that that is in fact the case. If uh, nothing has been chosen, we can return. That's nice and easy. But if something has been selected, we're going to have to do a little bit of work. I suppose, firstly, we're, we're going to need to have to know which container this widget was inside, because it's the, the parent container that we're going to have to signal here. So let's assume that there is a uh, function called container of, and that can take the uh, item that we have chosen, and then once the container has been found, then we can call remove on the container to take it out. Um, and let's set the chosen item to be nil as well. Now, what have a uh, tap? Or not tapped. Okay, that's that's the main issue with all of that code there. Of course, the container of is missing. Now this function is not hugely straightforward, so I'm going to just spare you some of that coding um, by taking it out from a buffer that I have over here. We'll talk it through though. So I'm just going to pop it with the selector code here, because it's sort of what it relates to. We already had a fine child, and this is sort of the inverse of that, of getting the container of something. So what we're going to pass in is the root container and the object that we're hunting for. And so it's going to iterate through all of the objects in that root container. If it matches, then we're going to return the, sorry, if it matches, we return the root that we're currently iterating through, that is the parent. And if we find 
that one of those children is a container, we step one level deeper and look to see if it could be found in there. If it was, we return what was found, and if not, we're following through, and it will return nil if nothing is matched. That's relatively straightforward, but I noticed it returned nil, so we need to handle that. So what do we do in that case? Um, well, the, in that case, it's going to be, we're going to use the root container, um, which I think is the object that was passed in, which we're saying is a container. And container of is searching, again, for um, the item in this same location. Actually, just let's make this a little bit more explicit and say that the root is the object at the top and it's a container, we know that. So let's pass the root in here and then save the casting there. So we're going to assume that the reported container there is what we can be working on. We'll remove it from there, we'll nil it out, and that should be everything. The remove function of container does a whole load of stuff. It's going to lay out the parent. We don't need to theme anything, so I don't think we need an extra refresh in there. In fact, that that might uh, that might be everything. We have oh, the button's not in the user interface yet. Okay, so where we currently insert the insert button down here, we're making a border. That's the name list at the top and the insert at the bottom. Um, and although I want the delete to be on the right, I don't want it all the way up the right. So um, actually this insert button becomes a, a button row, which is in itself um, another container, uh, another border where we have no top or bottom or left, but the right is um, remove. And then the, the content, the, the, the bit filling out, is the insert button. Um, so we now have a button row at the bottom of the border, which is the add remove section. Okay, let's just open the app here. Um, we'll use the existing project, open the user interface. And um, let's see if we can remove that label. Um, tap the delete button, and it's gone. Excellent. So then I suppose we'll see if we can add a label um, to replace the one we took out. Boom, there we have it, and the label is available to edit. And I suppose we can take it back out again. There we go. Okay, um, I guess that's it for today. You can now, I think, fully manage a user interface uh, by adding and removing items from containers. Mm -hmm. And of course, this applies to containers as well. You could add a new container, um, change the layout in it, and add widgets to that, meaning that you can create some pretty complex user interfaces. In fact, let's just have a quick look at how that could be done. For example, if we just open that same recent project, we can go to the user interface, where there's currently two items in our container, which is a vertical box, and we can add a new container to that, I can't see it right now, of course, because it's just on the um, bottom end of the button. But if we make that a grid, then we could see that there's now a second container here that's tappable. And we could put some items in there. Let's make that a grid as well, and then see if we can pop a button in there. And there you have it. That's a button inside a container. It's clearly part of a grid that's a smaller, um, portion of the screen and we could add more items in there, but you can already imagine what's possible with multiple containers embedded into your window. I hope you've enjoyed this video and find it to be to be useful. Please do watch out for the next video. We're not going to be running them quite as regularly this year, so the best way to be kept up to date with when there's one available is to hit that subscribe button before you leave us today. And don't forget also to keep an eye on our website at fission.app where you can be kept up to date with, with the latest things happening with this exciting new product that we're building. And you can go ahead and tap sign up if you would like early access to the full product when it's available for testing. Thanks for joining us and see you again next time.